Welcome everyone to the latest Coffee Break webinar by RIB Costex. My name is Francesca Nottingham and I'm a Costex consultant in RIB software. As you can see on screen, this month's topic is labels, markups and properties on ad. So we'll have a look at how to use these features within the software. For those of you who don't know what Costex is or for those who have never used it, Costex is a fully integrated measuring and estimating solution with universal applications, supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs DWGs, all the way through to 3D models, BIM files, and everything in between. As we can see from this matrix, RIB Costex is available in a variety of licenses, ranging from offering all functionality to a fairly limited option, depending on your estimating requirements. Delving deeper into each functionality, let's look at the components, breaking down how each of them are cohesive with one another, bringing you an all-in-one service. You have your takeoff options to start with, whether you're using 3D BIM or 2D drawings, Costex provides accurate data, enabling you to utilize this data within your workbook. So our workbooks are just like Excel spreadsheets, but they are our own version. They still have the ability to use formulas and functions, making them very easy to navigate and use. We then have revisions tracking. Now this offers an accurate method of comparing a previous revision with a new one, giving you multiple ways to highlight, identify and quantify any changes, meaning you're always up to date with the latest cost implications. Once you've completed your estimate, you then have the opportunity to produce a report. Now we offer various standard report templates for you to use. Alternatively, you can customize your own report producing a professional quality output. Don't forget to check out the RIB Costex YouTube channel where we upload our coffee break webinars and you can also subscribe so you get notified of the latest videos and kept up to date with the newest features and how to tips and tricks. So this month's webinar, as previously mentioned, we'll be reviewing labels, markups and properties on ad. Let's talk about what labels are. Labels are in relation to dimensions. So when you complete a takeoff, let's just say you have just measured the area of a room that will present some information, i.e. whatever you've chosen for the default display in your dimension group settings. If you have labels activated, then this information will show up on that dimension rather than you having to hover over it to get the quantity. Markups are similar in that you have to activate them to see them, but what these are are an opportunity to put an annotation on a drawing and include a caption. For example, if you're unsure of an item on a drawing or want to clarify something, you can create a markup and it will appear on the drawing where you need it to be. You can pick this up and move it around if you need to. With the properties on add tool, this feature is really beneficial if you have an anomaly within a dimension group. For example, if you are measuring external doors and you have set up your dimension group to encompass a generic height for all the doors, i.e. 2 metres tall, and you have one instance where the door might be slightly bigger, say 2.2 metres, then you can activate properties on add, which will give you the opportunity to change the height for that particular measurement. This will all become clearer throughout the demonstration. The topics we will cover in this webinar are as follows. Instances where labels are required and how to change them. The benefit of markups and how to hide them as necessary. How to implement the properties on add feature and scenarios where this is useful. So let's take a look at these labels, markups and properties on add features. So all these features can be found in the dimensions ribbon tab on the far right. These tools are in the show section. So we have our labels, we have our markups and we have our properties on add. So firstly, let's look at labels. Um, so this is where you can view the names, quantities and unit of measure of individual dimensions on the drawing by displaying the dimension labels. Dimension labels can be configured to display different data. You do this by going to File, Options, Drawings, and then scroll down to select what you would like to see. And here we have dimension labels. So you can use the drop down menu and decide which you want to see, whether it's just the dimension name, dimension name, quantity and unit, or quantity and unit. Let's have this one selected, which means when I show my labels and have this activated, this is what is displayed. So I'll click OK. So let's complete a measure. Okay, so at the moment I've got my labels deactivated. This isn't a grey button, it means it's deactivated. I have to hover over it to get the information. So the name is FN, which is me. Um, and then I also want the quantity, so it'll be my default display, which is uh, the area. 
um, and my unit of measure, which would be meters squared. So if I activate my label, so click this, as you can see, um, I've got, if I zoom in a bit more, so I've got the name of the dimension, which is my, or my initials, so FN, um, and then the number associated with this dimension. I then got the area, so 47.18 meters squared. So that is a label. If I zoom out, it gets bigger. Um, if I zoom in, it gets smaller. So that is labels. You've also got a drop down menu here, um, which allows you to either activate it or deactivate it. You can also increase the size of the label or decrease the size of the label as well, like so. Okay, and just switch it off as easily as you switched it on. If you use the top half of this button, it does the same thing. So if I activate it, it's now gray. That's now activated. If I turn it off, it's now disappeared. So same thing can be said for markups. So um, let's say this room, for example, I am unsure as to which uh, wall type it is. So let's just say I want to annotate this and ask the question to the designer. What I can do is create a markup. So what I'm going to do is just make sure my markups are activated. So I'm going to click on it. And as you can see, it's now turned gray, which means it's activated. I can now right click on my dimension and select from my menu, create markup. And I can select which font family it is. So I'm just going to leave this as Arial Unicode. Font size, I can adjust as well. I will leave this as 12. And then in the markup text, you just write a description or annotation um, of what you would like. So in this instance, I'm going to ask a question, what wall type is this? Okay, and then click on insert. And as you can see, I can pick this up and move it to wherever I need it. The other advantage with this is I can actually use my drawing reports, print my drawing window to report, and I can actually send that to my architect directly. So I can send it by email, export it to PDF or save it. Um, and they just get this information and they can see my annotation. Okay, you can just as easily hide this. So if I uh, deactivate my markups, then that has disappeared. Uh, if I turn it back on, it reappears. I've also got a drop down menu, similarly to the labels, so I can show my markups or um, deactivate this. I can increase the size or I can decrease the size. Okay, so finally with properties on add, um, what we can do is, um, let's just say we want to measure this uh, stairwell here, this stair void um, in the same dimension group, but this dimension group, if I hover over it, you can see the height or my default height is 2.6. If I go into the properties here, we can see 2.6 meters has been entered. Um, and our stair void is actually going to be uh, much taller than that. So I'm going to come out of here. I'm gonna make sure my properties on add feature is activated. So it's gone gray, I know it's activated. I'm just gonna measure this uh, stair void. And as I click that, you can see I've now got the opportunity to change some dimensions. So I can untick my height. So I don't want to use it as default. I actually want to increase the height of this to four meters. Click update. And as you can see, as I hover over it, I've got new information. So I've typed in a height of four. So my wall area um, is has been calculated with that four meters against the 19.8 meters uh, perimeter length. If I hover over here, you can see it hasn't changed the original one, still 2.6 meters. Although it's in the same dimension group, I can allow two different heights. Now, this can also be used if you've got variables in your um, dimension group and um, we do actually have a video on this, uh, which is using variables in dimension groups. Um, you can use the properties on add tool for that as well. Okay, thank you for listening. Tune in next month uh, for our next video on how to and tips and tricks. Um, and I hope you found this useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of uploaded videos.